on Hillary Clinton. She is she is she won't let go of this. It's getting embarrassing. It's getting embarrassing for her, although she doesn't sense that because she has such a feeling of entitlement and such a sense of having been cheated that she's lost all grounding in reality on this. And I, th- I think we are learning a lot about who Hillary Clinton really always has been in this little episode. She, like so many people on the left, considered her election to be a formality. It was that big a slam dunk. It had been fixed. It had been taken care of. Everybody had accepted it. Republicans and Democrats in Washington, everybody accepted it. Everybody was planning on it. Nobody thought Trump had a ghost of a chance after his first day announcing his candidacy. And they lived in denial about Trump throughout every Trump victory in the primaries and every Trump public rally. They were in utter denial. And so for how many years has Hillary Clinton been harboring this, I don't know if you call it dream or this expectation that the presidency was hers and it was ordained and it was simply a matter of time. And now it's been denied to her forever and she simply cannot deal with it. She's having the toughest time accepting it. And she's at it again. She's now saying that the Russian interference in the election was the cyber equivalent of 9-11, where 3,000 Americans died. She is comparing her defeat to 3,000 Americans dying on 9-11, which is an incredible statement to make. What's next? Is she going to compare her loss to the Holocaust? Is she going to say that her loss is the same thing as six million Jews perishing in World War II? Anyway, she's out claiming again the Russians hacked the election to undermine our democracy. But who has done more to undermine our democracy than Hillary Clinton, who not only claims the election last November was stolen, but she has claimed that the election in 2004 was stolen in Ohio. That's when John Kerry only needed 55,000 votes to win Ohio and he could have been president. And they think that the election in 2000 was stolen, the Florida recount in the Supreme Court. If you listen to Hillary Clinton, there hasn't been a legitimate election in this country since the year 2000, and she's just the latest victim. She told some interviewers in Aust- is it Austria, Australia, one of the two, that Putin helped Trump win because Putin doesn't like her. And then she said that Julian Assange helped Putin help Trump win because Julian Assange doesn't like her. Now, all this time, I thought Trump was supposed to be the paranoid nutcase. But Hillary Clinton is declaring that she owns that title. Julian Assange, for his part, had a good response to her attacks. He tweeted that Hillary was not a credible person, that there was something wrong with her. He tweeted, it's it's not just her constant lying. It's not just that she throws off menacing glares and seethes this thwarted entitlement. Something much darker rides along with it, a cold creepiness rarely seen. And whatever you think of Julian Assange, that is a fairly accurate description. She's Nurse Ratchet. But folks, now she's falling down again, breaking her toe and showing up late for interviews. Uh, Book signings are a disaster whenever she deigns to have one. She was speaking at the uh, South Bank Center London Literature Festival. Uh, she noted before going on stage that she had met with the London mayor, Shadig Khan, who told her that Trump played by fight club rules and she played by boxing rules. So she got everybody on her side claiming that she was cheated against. Or just cheated, period. But 9-11... And now that Julian Assange colluded with Russia to help Trump win. And then there's this. 
This is the piece de resistance. It's not just Hillary. The entire left, folks, the truth of the matter is these people are losing their minds. And they have been losing their minds ever since Trump won. Well, actually, I think it predates that. Newsweek magazine. Is it even a magazine anymore? Newsweek magazine barely exists. You talk about an implosion. Newsweek magazine or whatever it now is. Newsweek website. It is an embarrassment. They have their latest, I guess what they would call cover story, how Hillary Clinton still can and should become president after the Trump-Russia investigation. And this is written by a woman whose name is Julia Glum. Does that not fit perfect? Julia Glum writing about Hillary Clinton, how she can and should still become president. You want to hear what needs to happen? Sure, it's been more than 340 days since Trump won, but there's still a very narrow, highly unlikely, and entirely unprecedented way that Clinton could become president. And it has some Democrat diehards dreaming again, including Julia Glum, no doubt. Why else would she be publishing this nonsense? uh, Harvard professor Lawrence Lessig offered Hillary Clinton a path to the presidency on Medium, a website. He put forward a series of scenarios that lead to Paul Ryan becoming president and then handing the White House keys to Hillary Clinton. Lessig is a constitutional law expert. Here is how, and this is what the Democrats are telling themselves. Well, I don't know how many, but this is what the Hillary camp is telling itself. And this is what they're telling the media. And it has some support. It has some acolytes. And it's, it's one of these, if this happens, then this has to happen. And then if that happens, then this next thing has to happen. And then if that all happens, then the next thing has to happen. So here's the scenario. If Trump is definitely found to have colluded directly with Russia, he would be forced to resign or be impeached. If Trump is removed, Vice President Mike Pence would become president. Then if Pence becomes president, he should resign, too, given that he benefited from the Russian cheating. And then if Pence resigns before appointing a vice president, Paul Ryan would become president as the next in order as the secretary speaker of the House. And then if that happens, if Ryan becomes president, he should do the right thing and choose Clinton for vice president. And then Ryan should resign. And that is how Hillary can become president. And you want to talk about diluted? You want to talk about the Democrat Party imploding? This is considered, this is a Harvard law professor putting this out, which means in the sewer and its Twitter, it's going to have some support. And Mrs. Clinton's going to be fully buying into it. This is absurd. I mean, of all of these things, if Pence resigns before appointing a vice president. <laughs> That means Ryan would automatically become president, and Ryan, because of his great sense of honor, should resign, fully aware that the Republicans don't deserve the White House after all of this cheating with the Russians. And since he has chosen Hillary to be his vice president, she would then become president. Now, this Lessig guy writes this. The answer seems unavoidable. He should nominate the person defeated by the treason of his own party. This is Ryan. And then step aside and let Hillary become president. Without doubt, if Ryan did the right thing, that would be the most extraordinary event in the history of America since the Confederate Army fired on Fort Sumter. But unlike that, this event would build the Union, not divide it. What drugs are these people taking? What are they smoking? Now, one thing, don't doubt for a moment that this is why Comey and company made sure there was a special counsel, and this is why Mueller has hired 16 Hillary loyalists as staffers, 
because this scenario in one convoluted way or another has been the plot since shortly after November 9th of last year. Now, this name Lessig, they may ring some bells. He briefly ran for the Democrat nomination in 2015. Oh, he adds one thing, that after Hillary becomes president by virtue of Paul Ryan resigning in honor, that Hillary would appoint him as vice president out of political goodwill in an effort to unite America. Now, let this all sounds insane, and it sounds unhinged, but believe me, this is why the Mueller investigation, this is why the special counsel was named. I'm telling you, the people inside the Beltway, the swamp, the elites, whatever you want to call them, this is the pipe dream, getting rid of Trump. And it doesn't stop at getting rid of Trump. It doesn't stop until they get Hillary what is rightfully hers. And this is how insane it sounds when it's committed to paper by them. But this is what they're aiming for. And therefore, there are some of these people who literally think this has potential. But it all relies on Mueller now. It all relies on somebody being able to prove irrefutably that Trump and Russia colluded specifically to cheat Hillary. But as our next series of stories will demonstrate, if there was any collusion with the Russians, it looks like it was Obama and the Clintons starting in 2009 and it involves the American uranium supply, and this is not brand new. We've known about this uranium deal for years, ever since Peter Schweiker's book, Peter Schweitzer's book. But what we didn't know was that the FBI has evidence of the collusion, and they shelved it. Hang on. We'll be back and continue after this. 